I, I decided to take a risk. You know, I left my job after eight years of being in the medical field. And I mean, I used to do this on the side, jewelry and accessories. And, you know, we always had this mindset, especially within the Caribbean, that some dreams cannot be achieved and we can only see it as, you know, a side thing or a side gig. But I remember once somebody told me that, you know, what are you doing? Like, you have a gift. Why aren't you pursuing that gift? So while growing up, I always used to sketch a lot. I, I draw on like everything I could, whether it was my desk, my wardrobe, <laughs> even on the walls, sad to say. <laughs> but it, it always made me happy. It made me feel like I was in a completely different world. And I remembered once my dad was like, you know, you need to study. So I would hide this particular sketchbook under my pillows. And when I knew he was coming like to check on me, I would just put it under the pillows, you know, and pretended like, you know, I was reading my books and stuff. And then when he went away, I used to take it out again and start drawing. And he used to always find it though, because when I fell asleep and they would take all the books from, from my bed, they would always find my, my drawings. I think he was over it by then. I mean, he couldn't help it. Three words I would use is passionate, driven, and I am a very humble and down to earth person. I grew up in a community of Biosh. I went to the Dubla Primary School. Um, Biosh is a very small community. As I said, it's a fishing community. I have three brothers. One is now deceased. My brother is somebody who really supported what I did because, you know, being young and not being able to have the opportunities right at your doorstep and having to work so hard for it is really something that's, I don't know how to describe it, but when you hear the words, I'm proud of you, or one day you're going to make it big from somebody that you love especially my sibling you know it's just it's just a different feel i would dabble in a lot of um custom ju jewelry break it apart jewelry of my mother actually and just create something you know more unique or something that i would like to wear and i remember once someone told me you know asked me you know where did you get this? And I was like, I make it myself. <laughs> and they were like, is it for sale? So with that said, I was, I was saying to myself, okay, if she could really ask me, you know, if this is for sale, then maybe I could explore that option of actually creating jewelry and selling it. I got contacted by the director of Anguilla Fashion Expo. And this was actually my first fashion show. And when I when I got that invite, I was it was very nerve wracking <laughs> because I I really did not know, you know, how to go about developing a line back then. I I did not know what to do. Back then, the Ministry of Commerce, they came on board. You know, they call me. I send out letters to ask different sponsors, okay, if they would be willing to help a young designer, you know, put her products out there, especially coming from Dominica, because I would basically be representing my country as well. And the uh, Ministry of Commerce came on board, but what touched me the most was when National Bank came on board. I actually broke down <laughs> in tears in front of them. When I went there, you know, there were other experienced designers and it was even more nerve wracking. But what really encouraged me was the fact that there was this woman who she owned a boutique in Anguilla and the US and she wanted all of my jewelry. And I was so shocked. I was like, you want it all? And she was like, yes. <laughs> 
so that that was really really encouraging you know even when you think that you're inexperienced and you don't know what you're about in your first show but to have someone come out and say okay i want all of your jewelry makes you think okay you have something there I'm still gonna mention the one about my coach, you know. I I used to be a, a national athlete once upon a time in my life and I did not like training. <laughs> I used to run, I competed in 800 um, meters and, and 1,500. And the preparation for these races like took so much from you. It was hard and my coach would always say, no pain no gain and that sticks with me like you are not going to get where you have to go (laughs) with just like a wave of a wand you know i mean some people may have that luck but for many others we have to work hard in order to achieve what we have to achieve so sometimes requires sleepless nights no pain no gain sometimes requires you to put in a lot of research no pain no gain you have to do what you have to do and then my father would always tell me every disappointment is a blessing you know i initially i mentioned like i wanted to go to milan but i got redirected here it's still a blessing all all of your disappointments is a blessing because you know i look at coming here as a preparation for being able to probably do that other course you know, right now I get to do the full thing, you know, the whole garment production. And and that that caused me to be so grateful and thankful for that opportunity. So I will say it again, every disappointment is a blessing. You could have a talent and you don't have that humility. It wouldn't take you far. You have to be able to network with others. And I would also tell them, like, don't give up don't give up like it doesn't matter what (laughs) people may say or tell you but don't give up